Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Ima bera'i alhabitifillah Continuing on in our study of uh, Our brief commentary on uh, Nuwakid al-Islam By Dr. Saleh As-Saleh Rahmatullah alayhi We reach the 8th Nuwakid min Nuwakid al-Islam Where Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah ta'ala said A famine مظاهرة المشركين ومعاوناتهم على المسلمين ودليل قوله تعالى ومن يتولهم منهم منكم فإنه منهم إن الله لا يهدي قوم الظالمين The eighth nullifier of faith that Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله تعالى mentioned was standing by the مشركين meaning by disbelievers, supporting them and helping them against the Muslims so that they are prevalent, that this is disbelief. And there's a lot of details with regards to this issue. And again, if you want to go back to the details, then go back to some of the other uh, explanations and explanations that uh, also on my channel here, you'll find uh, a more detailed explanation of this treatise. But, uh, and, and the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, And he amongst you who take them as friends wholeheartedly, then surely he is one of them. And this shows us, Ahabatifillah, that having excessive uh, alliance and allegiance and resembling, and all of these aspects of showing open love to those other than the Muslims, to, to people other than the Muslims, is a very dangerous thing. And we're not talking about, this is not inclusive of or in reference to loving, for example, your non-Muslim relatives and kin or what have you. But this is in reference to loving people for their disbelief and supporting disbelief. So, for example, as I'm sure some people that might be listening now in re reference to what's going on in the political domain of the group ISIS or IS, the Islamic State, and now many Muslim countries have gotten together and are uh, attacking them. Why? Because they're a threat to the Muslims, they're a threat to the believers. And so to rely and have uh, support and alliances with the disbelievers against Muslims, the asl of it is, is Muharram. And it is one of the things that take you out of the fold of Islam. But when it comes to a matter where there is a great maslaha, you know, a maslaha, a benefit for the greater community, that you have a group of rebels or people who are rebelling, not that they're necessarily rebelling, but they are threatening uh, Muslim societies. And they're threatening and they're killing with their brutality, they're killing everyone. And they don't distinguish. They just kill. They kill how many, uh, recently some Muslim reporters. They kill non-Muslims. They cut heads off everyone. Just you know, they just lit litter the the desert with heads. So they present a danger, as the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, to fight the Khawarij and the Fuqaha of Islam. So this is not something new. The Fuqaha of Islam speak about this in detail in their books about fighting the rebels and fighting the Khawarij and, and even some of these details about. Uh, seeking uh, assistance from non-Muslims. Isti'ana bi uh, kuffar, you know, to have support from the disbelievers and so forth. And that the Prophet, one of the evidence evidences for that if there is, of course, a benefit, then uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu illustrated, the Prophet والسلام, used a, uh, a, a pagan to help him on his uh, his way on the on the to find the, the path you know for guidance on the on the road on the path and so this is one of the evidences that the ulama from the salaf used about this issue showing us it's not a black and white issue and that there are times when to repel the evil of a great transgressor that there may be a necessity to seek assistance and have alliances with non-Muslims in order to stop even people who are Muslim. 
Because those people who are Muslim do not even regard you as Muslims. And they will not distinguish when they have your heads on their swords or their Kalashnikovs aimed at your head. They don't uh, make a distinguish. So their evil must be repelled and must be uh, checked. So this is uh, a little bit, very, very brief about that. And then we'll go on to the ninth. In the ninth one, the Imam said, uh, the, the ninth, he said, believing that some people are special, that they don't have to follow the Prophet ﷺ, those people who deny the Sunnah and say that, that they don't have to follow the Sunnah. You usually find this within the general Muslim community, is those people like the uh, extreme Sufis, okay, very extreme people who adhere to the various strands of Sufism, those that take you out of the fold of Islam, those people who worship graves, they seek assistance from the dead, they seek, uh, you know, they worship the awliya, they worship their, their scholars that are living and dead, and so forth, even eating the najasa from them, and I've seen this myself in Hadramaut, uh, and, and things like this. So, uh, there are those people who are outside the fold of Islam who say La ilaha illallah, say Ashadu an La ilaha illallah, wa Ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. They say this, they make the shahada, they believe themselves to be Muslims, but they do many things to take them out of the fold of Islam, and they believe that their awliya, their saints, or their imams, or their scholars are infallible. Similar to the Rafa the Shia. The Ithna Ashariya, they believe their 12 Imams, their Ayatollahs and things like this are infallible, that they have no sins. They actually, even some of them hold them to the status of where they're better than the NBA, either equal with the Prophets or better. And this is a wicked type of deception from the Shaitan. And so going back to the Nas, Believing that some people don't have to follow the Prophet ﷺ is kufr. Because this negates the second part of the declaration of Tawheed, Muhammad is a slave and messenger of Allah. Since this constitutes denying, de desiring a religion other than Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And whoever desires a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted from him. And in the hereafter, he will be one of the losers. And so... Also, what some of the people of Tasawwuf in the past, especially probably within the past few hundred years, some of them, they used as evidence for their not having to practice the Sharia and practice uh, what the Prophet ﷺ came with. They tried to use as a hujja, as dalil, as evidence, the fact that uh, Musa, Khidr, uh, who was around during the time of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, that he did not, uh, he was not, uh, he did not practice the sharia of Musa. So they try to use this as evidence. And then the ulama, they, they speak about this extensively, that Khidr was either uh, a prophet, so he had his own sharia, but he was not, uh, the bottom line is, is they both had separate sharias to follow. And of course, and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or some say that he was a, a, whole, a, a saint, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. However, the point being is this is not a hujjah, because after the Prophet sallallahu there was no other prophets, alayhim after salatu wasalam, there was no other uh, messengers after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There was no, no one after him who came with a message, regard, uh, a divinely revealed message. And along with that, that uh, so all of the people who were during the time of the Prophet وسلم, and after him وسلم, are responsible to practice the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم. They're responsible for Islam as we know it, uh, based on Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah, that they are responsible for that. 
and that anything other than that is 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 unacceptable and uh, disbelief. So it is not permissible for someone to say, "I do not have to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam." And this also, perhaps, we can make ishara to the. Qur'aniyun, those people who deny the sunnah altogether. There are those people who deny the sunnah altogether who are disbelievers. They say we follow the Qur'an, we believe in the Qur'an. The sunnah, we don't believe it. It's man-made, it's this, it's that and the other. They have many arguments for this. The most extreme of them are disbelievers. Then there are those amongst them who have a tendency to not mention the sunnah. And they have some dislike and due to their ignorance and so forth. So these people are wicked innovators from Ahlul Bid'ah, but some of them are in the fold of Islam, but they are affected by this uh, belief and this creed or this menhaj of the Qur'an Yun. So it's a very dangerous madhab, and anything, and anyone who believes that they don't have to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet should go back to some of the ahadith of the Prophet who said, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever desires other than my sunnah, then he's not from, from, from me, from, from us, or from me. You know, he's not a follower of me. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa Allah, wa rasul, and follow Allah, obey Allah, and obey the Messenger. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if tarakat al-Yahud ala itu wa sab'in firqa, if tarakat al-Nasara ala thinatain wa sab'in firqa, wa sit if tarakat al-Hadi umma ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kullaha fin nara ala wahida, kulla man hiya ya Rasulullah, qala man kana ala mithu ma kana alayhi wa sahabi al-yawm. The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, the Jews broke into 71 sects, the Christians in 72 sects, my umma in the 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon um, what I'm upon and my companions. The Prophet ﷺ said, Alaykum bi sunnah to sunnah to al-Khulafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdiin. He said, It's upon you, my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifat. So there are an immense amount of sound narrations of the Prophet ﷺ and Athar of the Salaf of this Ummah, radiallahu ta'ala anna majma'in, and ayat, Qur'aniyah first and foremost that show us that we have to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet and there's, it's impossible for someone to follow the Qur'an and not the Sunnah even if they, because the Qur'an itself tells you to follow the Sunnah so someone who claims that they follow the Qur'an and not the Sunnah in fact doesn't follow the Qur'an they follow their desires, they follow their ignorance and their wicked misunderstandings and may Allah protect us and protect the Muslims everywhere the last knocket that is mentioned, we'll, we'll mention so we can finish up this commentary and hopefully it'll be a benefit. Al Ashr Al Irad on Dini Lahi Ta'ala, La Yata'alamu, Walla Yamanu Be, Wadi Kolo Ta'ala, Women Adlamu Mimma Mimma Zukida Bi Ayati Rub Ayati Rubbihi, Thumma Arada Anha, In Milal Mujrimin Muntapi Moon. The final naqid in the walk of Islam that was mentioned is completely turning away from the religion of Allah, not learning it and practicing it is disbelief. So the one who just totally stays in ignorance, they don't know how to pray properly, they don't know how to make wudu properly, they've been Muslim for many years and they just avoid knowledge at all costs. They never, they don't, you know, maybe they go for Jumu'ah and stuff, but they just don't do anything to at all advance their knowledge in Islam. Because there is knowledge that is wajib. The Prophet ﷺ said, طلب العلم فريدة على كل مسلم ومسلم. The Prophet ﷺ said, seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim man and every Muslim woman. That doesn't mean every Muslim man and Muslim woman has to be an alim. No. It means every Muslim man and every Muslim woman must know how to practice their religion properly. They must know uh, the correct aqidah, not by blind following, not by just saying Sheikh bin Baz said or Sheikh so and so said or my Sheikh said. La, they have to know creed and aqidah in believing in Allah and who Allah is. Uh, they have to believe that with knowledge. They have to have enough knowledge to know something about to know about Tawheed. Okay, to know Allah is the creator of the heavens and earth. Know Allah is the sustainer. Know Allah is the only one worthy of worship. 
and all who worship in a valley goes to him and know about all Subhanatala's divine names and attributes, at least know those, those basic principles. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikitab al Kareem, they say, Kamikali Shay, Wu Samir al Basir, that there is nothing uh, that resembles him or alike unto him. Uh, and he is the all hearing and all seeing. So know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfect divine names uh, and attributes, that his creation does not possess those attributes. There is no resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. So the believer needs to know that. So there, it requires that every Muslim does enough to do that. Also, every believer needs soul food. You need food that's going to feed your soul, and that's Islamic knowledge. That's what's going to help you stay practicing and stay Muslim, in fact, because we've seen many people, and I, in my personal experience, especially the communities that I came from, where I could say more than 50% of the people around the time that I took my Shahada more than 50% of the people that I were from my cohorts and generation and a little bit younger than me had left Islam, especially the women, because no one was there to teach them and they had no real desire to learn and there, there wasn't really any alternatives, there were no options. So no one was there to enlighten them. They were Muslim, they prayed, they did some acts of ibadah, and that was it. It was almost trendy and so forth, <clears throat> so many of them when their personal trials and tribulations in their lives or, or in the world community happened, they left Islam because they were unable to weather the storm, weather the fitna, because you'll be tried with your Iman constantly. <clears throat> and knowledge is one of the things that will help you, will help you defend against doubtfulness and help you defend against uh, your desires because the two ways that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions that the shaitan attacks the people is through their shubahat and shahwat. The shubahat meaning the doubtful matters through doubting in a religion, other uh, foreign beliefs and, and bid'ah and disbelief to threaten and challenge your belief in Islam and your belief in Allah and your worship of Allah. And likewise, the shahwat, your desires, of course, the, your, the love for... Um, for the opposite sex, for cohabit cohabitating and things like this, the love to be uh, intoxicated, you know, to have a, um, you know, an outlet, or whatever the case may be, to do muharramat that goes in accordance with your desires. That these things, one of the best ways to defend against it is by knowledge of those things, not just knowing that they're halal and haram, but also knowing and having. The more you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala the more that it can help you, uh, that it will help you practice and increase your Iman and have real taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. And taqwa habitifillah is uh, avoiding the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enjoying His commands. You know, practicing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding and avoiding what He has uh, warned us against. And though those, uh, all of those things that comes with Ayn, the Prophet said, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them the understanding of the religion. The ulama deduce from this, they say, the mafhum mukhalifa, that <coughs> the opposite of, is, is that the opposite case is true likewise. Meaning that whenever a person is stagnant in the religion, this is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want good for them. That Allah doesn't have love for this person. That their love is, is limited. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not. Uh, favoring this person because to stay ignorant is to stay stagnant. Ignorance, there's no way you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly without knowledge to do so. If you don't know how to, you know, to pray witr, to pray the tahat, to pray the night prayer, to pray uh, tarawih, or, you know, whatever, all the acts, uh, Ramadan, to fast Ramadan, uh, you know, when it's legislated to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when it isn't. If you don't have knowledge about these issues, how can you practice them? <coughs> and how can you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So, fiqh fi deen is understanding and wisdom and hikmah in the religion is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it comes from tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it comes from seeking ilm, from knowledge. But the person who stays totally stagnant, then they make so many mistakes in their ibadah, even if they stand all night in prayer, Maybe they stand all night in prayer, but they don't pray the wajib, and they sleep through fajr, and they sleep through dhuhr, and whatever, okay? So it shows you that ignorance 
Ignorance can not only lead to disbelief, but that when a person is obstinate, as Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Hab Rahimahullah Ta'ala is, is referring to, the person who's obstinate, that this person, uh, in, in refusing knowledge in totality, to know what is an obligation upon them, then this person is disbelieved. Because they're refusing Islam. For them, it's just sufficient to have a, be Muslim by name. They don't pray and they don't know how to pray. Nor do they want to know how to pray. This is uh, 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 a crime against themselves. So completely turning away from the religion of Allah, not learning it and practicing it, is kufr. So the person who is obstinate in practice, obstinate in refusing, obstinate even in, in making dua, make sure you rely on Allah. This is advice to myself and my brothers and sisters. Sometimes we feel so bogged down by our own sins and so forth, we feel that Allah doesn't want to hear from us or that we're too sinful to even get the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we still have to worship Allah still turn to Him in ibadah the Prophet sallallahu said that dua hu ibadah that dua is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna ladini istakhbinuna an ibadati fasiyadkhununa jahannam adakhirin that whoever is arrogant so this relates to this whoever is arrogant and Refusing to worship me with du'a. Inna ladin yistakhbirun, yistakhbirun an ibadati fa sayyid khuluna jahannam adakhirin. Then they will enter into the hellfire humiliated. Showing us that the reward for the one who remains ignorant and arrogant towards Allah is that they will be in, a, in the hellfire humiliated. So it's imperative to increase your knowledge about Islam, come closer to your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and advance yourself. Because as I said, I've seen many, I've known many people who've left the fold of Islam uh, and uh, due to a lack of knowledge. And this is also relates to one of the noah that we already mentioned, which was ridiculing the religion. If you don't know what the religion is, you can fall into ridiculing it easy, easily. And one thing I w want to say, which although I know we all like to laugh, we like comedians and so forth, but the one who's in a serious, a serious status, and I, I haven't listened to any Muslim comedians. I saw one particular individual, I think he's Canadian, or maybe from the UK, I don't know, uh, who's a Muslim comedian and he travels around, maybe he's American, I don't know. And I listened to maybe one minute of a, a clip, I recall, and he was making fun of actually of African Americans. He was talking about other people in the community. He was Pakistani American or Pakistani British or whatever. And he was ridiculing his African American brothers amongst the Muslim community. You know, he was making some jokes. This could be very, uh, not just sensitive in, in causing. Uh, hatred between the Muslims, discord, that's one aspect. Another aspect that this individual could be falling into, and I'm sure that since that was, that was a light thing, a little thing that I saw, that I listened, because I only listened for maybe a minute, I can imagine how within his show, within an hour-long set of, uh, in, a, um, in his act, or 45 minutes or whatever, I'm sure he said some things and makes jokes because he's appealing to a Muslim audience that relates to Islam or is about Islam. This is incredibly serious. It's better to cut, close that door completely because I don't understand how a Muslim comedian could really survive, uh, especially if he mentions anything about Islam. It's very dangerous because it could he could easily fall into this nullifier faith. And we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, and thus ends our very brief commentary uh, about the Nuwaq al-Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and any mistakes that we made. And anything I said was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon the authors, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, and Dr. Saleh Asare, rahmatullahi alayhi wa sallam, 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 wa s